Stay tuned to the end of this video for your chance to win a Star Citizen game package complete with Origin 400i and lifetime insurance. This prize has been provided to us by CIG to give away to one lucky viewer. Full details to follow at the end of the video. When we left things off, Artax and me were leaving the remote Lagrange cloud at Mikhail 3 on our way to another edge of the Stanton system, Mikhail 5. We'd managed to salvage a little before we left, but we were hoping that the new cloud would see us towards a more substantial profit. Our cargo bay currently holds 11 boxes of salvage from Mikhail 3, not a whole lot, but a nice head start on the day. And our first stop would be the rest stop station servicing this Lagrange cloud, Modern Icarus. Never been to this station. The um, L4 station is cooler. In fact, the L4 station might be the coolest station. This one is also good. I'll jump in now and find out. And by sheer coincidence, I dropped right in on top of a small collection of hull panels. These Lagrange clouds are very atmospheric, which is cool. Wait, wait a minute. I think we got something here. Nice. I think, yeah, we got something here. I'm gonna hold this position and I'll just see if I can drink something. Hold this position and wait. Okay. But there would be a technical problem getting in the way of Artax finding me. You'll be able to jump to me when you- I don't have your marker, I won't be able to jump to you. Artax was missing party markers and these clouds are enormous. Our best bet at this point was to meet at the station. If you get a bearing at a distance from the station, you can go back there. It looks like it was west minus 10 degrees. Arriving at Modern Icarus Station, I could see that my thirst was getting very serious, so I'd be making a stop at the clinic, not just to recuperate, but also to set my regen here, just in case any accidents were to happen. Artax was already looking for the panels that we had left behind. So that was at like the at zero 05 heading? It would be west from the station. West. Found the wreck. I found the pieces. I'll come to you. I think I found them. There's three of them. Good, that sounds good. And Artax had some ideas about the desync we'd experienced the day before. <clears throat> I wonder what would happen if, because since you're seeing, since you see such a different uh, wreck than I see, I wonder what would happen if, like, when I saw that it was empty, if you got in the seat, would you be able to keep going or? I don't know, but that's worth trying. Arathorn is finally linked up with us and would be joining us for two days salvage runs. With two vultures active, surely we'd see much faster progress as we stripped segments of the hull out here. Just like before, I'd be helping Artax by moving around his cargo and operating the filler station. It says it's full for me, so I'm gonna wait a second and see if it ejects. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's at like 79 for me, but I'm sure it will eject. So, I think I got my first box. It's working. Wait, oh cool, are you, are you at the same pieces as us? Okay, cool. I'm right next to you all. As the vultures moved around, I'd gotten quite far from the caterpillar, so I'd head back to bring it closer. The layout of the caterpillar is really quite perfect for this role, and we'll see that taken to its maximum conclusion in the next video. For now, being set up to bring Artax cargo on board was the goal. That. I was like, these things are moving. <laughs> good, good. Of course, accidentally entering EVA is still easy to do, and with the current problems, it's very disorienting. Oh, damn it. EVA spin got me. <laughs> I was
was heading back aboard to continue operating the filler station and initially I could still move the boxes straight over to the caterpillar. I was also still formulating plans on how to maximise efficiency while out here. I think what you need really is you, you need someone you need someone scouting as well, like so that while vultures are clearing a spot, you've got someone else scouting for the next one. Yep. It wasn't long before I could no longer move cargo to the caterpillar. The patch we'd found was used up in record time with the two vultures active, the panels did not last long. We were beginning the search for another patch, and in what was becoming a habit, we'd be heading for a large cluster of rocks. On the far side, near the station wreckage, a possibility. Check out the far side, there's a cloud. Quite close to the wreck station actually, there's a cloud. Wait, 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 wait. I think I got something here. Yeah, yeah, we got oh, big panels too. We got, ooh, yeah, we got three big panels. Three big panels. My position. That would be great. Like, that would really up the efficiency of this trip. I see him now. Yes, good, yeah. Oh, no, there's four panels. I didn't even see that fourth one. Yep. The fourth one's small, but, you know, it does exist. We were actually in quite a beautiful spot here too, on the very edge of this rock cluster. Yeah. We get this, these panels done. That's like, what, another 20-ish boxes? And then we head back with that, that'll be 40, 50 boxes maybe. Do you want me to keep scouting or just go for it? I feel a bit rude if I send you away from our, our, our find. There's plenty to go around. These panels represented maybe 32 boxes of salvage, but our tax and I would run into the problem of the vulture not pulling in material once more. Yeah, this isn't picking up anything anymore. Oh, shit. Let me try jumping in the pilot seat, because it's okay. my ship. Maybe it'll respond, I don't okay. know. If not, you could take the dragonfly back to the station. Yep, it's filling. It's filling for go. me. Yep. If you jump back in, see if it fills for you. Okay. Good. So there's a full on logistics operation going on here. Oh yeah. I'd need to return to the cargo bay to continue moving the boxes from the filler station. Though it is quite cool to stand over someone's shoulder as they are salvaging away. Artax was making fast progress on the boxes, and Arathorn, who was above salvaging another panel, was also doing an excellent job of stripping away that material. Should be ejecting right now. It feels like there's like a like a 30, 40 second delay between what you you're doing and when it reaches me. Like yep. your beams don't stop for like 30 or 40 seconds, and that's when it ejects as well. And Arathorn would bring up an observation about an odd feature of the vulture that I too had been thinking about. Is there a trick to getting out of the seat without uh, flying out into space every single time? Um, this is something we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it seems to randomly decide which one it's doing, which is yeah. really not helpful. Because imagine if you were like, if you were doing this in like just normal clothes, yeah, like that would be a death sentence when it randomly. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's like 40 seconds. Yeah. While you're working on the next one, I'm gonna go and move the caterpillar. Okay. On the way back, I would pass Arathorn.
This time we lined things up perfectly and I was able to open the door directly behind the vulture. There is something very satisfying about seeing a ship like the Caterpillar slowly filling with cargo. In the next video we'll see a kind of eureka moment where the Caterpillar's design really gets its justification. But the ease of access to the cargo grid here itself makes loading very easy. I'll move the box now. Okay. Okay, the machine is clear. Okay. Ooh, we're actually in a good spot that I could actually probably push them straight over there. It's ejecting right now. Unfortunately, I will be moving here in a second because I okay. gotta get to a different piece. That's fine. Soon it was Arathorn's time to head back and unload, and while we were busy at work on another panel, we catch a glimpse of his progress at the Caterpillar. I can see you done it. <laughs> Mining mode, and I will get out of the seat. Artax had once again lost the ability to pull in more material, so we were doing a seat swap to fix it again. It's going up. Yeah, it is going up. Yeah, it's about to, it's about, I think we're about to reject the box. Here we go. So when, it, when you eject a box, it ejects right away. <laughs> it could be, I guess, desync between me and you. I'm, yeah, I'm probably hella desync to your ship, maybe. It is filling, so... Go to town. <laughs> but soon, Arathorn would also suffer this problem. Are you broken or full? I'm broken. Oh, you're broken. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. It might be a good idea to see if Artax can take the... Like, if you give the controls to Artax, See if Artax can pop. There we go. Box coming out. Uh, no, it ain't pulling anything. Still. So. Well, see, see if switching again makes it work. Yes, that'd be good. And I am pulling stuff. Sweet. Okay. For now, at least, swapping seats was fixing the problem. When we come across problems, we overcome those problems. <laughs> because we've been playing Star Citizen for a couple of years. It's usually a way around most bugs. It's quite an atmospheric spot, isn't it? This uh, little nebula. Right, look it out the back. Got it. We were also seeing some odd behavior from the cargo grid, where empty spots could not be snapped to, but the spot above them could be. I'm also not pulling anything. Uh, I guess we could try Arathorn in here and you in Arathorns and see if that fixes anything. I'm just patiently trying to get these boxes out of here because it takes a long time for the tractor beam to recognize that it's uh... Yeah. Server degradation is a known issue with 318 at this point in time, something CIG are working to iron out, and we were definitely seeing signs of it on this server now. It put me out the side, goddammit. <laughs> uh oh. For some reason, I'm coming aboard. Oof. Thank you. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I am suffocating when I've got a helmet, even though I've got a helmet on. I jump into EVA again to confirm this, and once again, my health was dropping. Based on our experiences in PTU, this was a bad sign. Don't die. My inventory is completely screwed. I think we might have to go and sell this stuff, like, immediately, just because I'm worried that the server's gonna degrade to the point where we won't be able to. So, the plan now was just to unload our cargo and head back to sell it. There was no telling how long this server was going to last. I'll stay in the command module just in case. Okay, cool. I thought I saw you go across, that's all. I, no, I... no, no. <laughs> I'm very much still in the um, vulture. Okay, I've got a full med pen in my hand. I should be able to make it over. Okay. Ah, uh, spinning. Oh! Spun right into the ship, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> um, but I mean, we've got a fair amount of cargo on board, right? Do you want me to close all doors? Let's let Artex get aboard first. We didn't know exactly how much we had on board, but it was cool to move through the compartments and see it all. 
good work. Okay, go ahead and seal this up and we'll um, head for uh, Art Corp. Yeah, let's go to Art Corp. We'll go to the TDD at Art Corp. Home sweet home. <laughs> right, yeah. So with Arathorn at the helm, we were once again heading for Art Corp, a place that is becoming a habit of mine to sell to. if there'll ever be anything to do in all this area. I really hope so. It is my hope that someday when you are exploring new locations, cities on planets in other systems for example, that there are missions and activities to do within the city itself, things to keep you there. So when you arrive at a place you can maybe spend a couple of days there before moving on. I've played a lot of space games and there are always missions that ask you to jump to a different moon or a different location on the planet, but one thing that's always struck me as missing are local missions. Maybe a worker at a mining outpost needs you to find his buddy's broken down Ursa rover, or a city gang needs you to deliver a message to a rival gang. In Area 18, I feel this kind of thing would especially work well. Okay, how many do you think we've got? I don't know. 30? 30. 60? Yeah, oh, it's 70. 70, not 60. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> could have been, if, if we managed to get all of those panels, I think it could have been about that, but... See him in, uh... Yeah, I see him in chat. 42! Okay, we got 42... Um... 323,000, so that's like a hundred and... something each. Um... We'd each made about as much as a solo run in the Vulture. This is still early days for us with salvaging, and so our profits at the moment are always pretty low. Server problems and issues with the Vulture slow us down, we've nearly always had to abandon some material and head back in early in the hopes of avoiding losses to crashes or 30Ks, but I feel we'd really need to figure out efficiency practices as well. We were returning to Houston L3 to test a few things out, and specifically advice I've been given by you guys in the comments of our videos. I myself have been learning a lot from the little bits of knowledge you guys are passing along, and maybe we'd see a more efficient operation by putting it into practice. First thing I learned in the biggest time saver is that scanning mode can quickly find salvage by looking for signatures that are multiples of 2000. This signature is exactly 2000. Scanning, you're right, scanning works that helps a lot. <laughs> Where's the best place to sell this stuff? Next, the HUD will tell you when you can and cannot pull in material. When you eject a box, the ship does not immediately have a fresh empty box to start filling again. It has to create one. And this is indicated just above the bar that shows you how much salvage you have collected. Unfortunately, with the current server delays on inventory actions and the like, this new box can be significantly delayed or even never show up at all. And this is why the Vulture loses its ability to pull in salvage material. But by looking at the zero or the one on the head, at least we know what the condition is. Out of one goes down to like out of zero so it'll be like you know zero slash zero SCU that's because the ship hasn't created the uh, the new empty box yet and you've got to wait for that to say one again and that's when it'll start pulling salvaging again with the space around us buzzing with vultures, it wouldn't take long at all to confirm the advice you guys had given about the new box problem and continue salvaging. Okay, so now right now, for example, it says cargo zero out of zero SU. So I know, but I'll wait for that to say one again. There we go, now it says one. So that solves that little mystery. Pyrocles was coming aboard to be my box puller and he brought a nomad along with him. But Pyrocles had left the shields on. 
Wait, let's see. It's the same thing with shield. Yeah, shield it, yeah. soft dust and maybe it was the server delays again but those shields were still up still so shielded what the hell <laughs> <laughs> okay that's very not possible <laughs> I guess we're gonna hard death it okay now we've got it yeah the server Much and while in EVA, Pericles would make an interesting observation about the smaller panels. So, you said that the big panel with the one that we really want. Yes. Yeah, so the little one, I can move around with the track beam. The big <laughs> one will act like a ship where what? it will pull me to it. You can move that with the track beam. I mean, I mean, you could technically put that in a ship, like you could put that in the cargo bit of a ship and then hand salvage it <laughs> aboard the ship. <laughs> Damn, look at that! You are moving that panel around, that's crazy. <laughs> but like I said, sometimes the new box on board the Vulture would just never update, and swapping pilots seems to be one of the better options. Pericles, do me a favor, jump in the pilot seat a second, see if it updates for you. That worked for me now, tax squad, you know, rather than going to another bed log. And I would head below deck just to see how much salvage Pericles had stacked up. Gonna look, take a look at your handy. Oh, wow. Yeah, you've done a great job in here. Holy shit. So we're up to what, 18 now? Yep. Holy shit. Personally, I think maybe we should move on to the next panel because this one is, uh, it was pretty much done when I was finished and there's, there's little bits on there, I suppose, yeah, but I can see your head like standing over your shoulder. Yes, you did. Excellent. Yeah, there are, there are half a million well. Okay. Trade back with you now. We'll see if that speeds it up. By the time we were done, we had 23 boxes on board. 24 is definitely possible. Yeah. If you're careful, you may get 26. If you include the space where the ejection port is. Yeah, because if you just hold the box with your tractor beam as it ejects, then you can just drop it on top. Once again, our corp was to be our destination. We were closer to Orison at this point, but Crusader is arguably the busiest planet in Stanton, and so heading a little out of our way to reduce the number of players we'd encounter seemed like the smarter move. But I did warn that problems can cut you short at any moment, and just a kilometer or two from the spaceport, we would crash to desktop. Oh no! Ah no, Pericles, um, I'm crashing to desktop. On loading back in, I was amazed that the ship was fine. We'd overshot the spaceport, but we had not crashed. Oh, we're still alive! Oh my god! Yeah, I see your ship there. Well, that's that's convenient. Didn't die. We went right over the spaceport though, wow. I think another couple of minutes and we would have hit the ground based on the angle. But the server was not gonna let us claim victory here. Cyrus was about to deliver the bad news. Uh we are at 30k. No Is that the end of the world? I don't think it is, is it? Probably probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 
So we'd suffered a 30k and on this occasion cross protection did not save us. The ship needed to be claimed when we rejoined and all of the cargo was lost. These kind of problems can hopefully be ironed out in the upcoming 318.1 patch as losing a full load of cargo is definitely demoralizing even when we've been warned to expect server issues right now. We'd be heading back to Mikkel 5 though and this time with four vultures, a trip that would show what the caterpillar was really designed for. Join us next time to see how we get on. We have another amazing game package giveaway today courtesy of CIG, this time in celebration of Stella Fortuna and in universe analog to St. Patrick's Day. The prize today is a Star Citizen game package and an Origin 400i, lifetime insurance and the Fortuna Green paint scheme. The 400i is a luxury multi-role ship with a lot of style. For your chance to win just drop a like and a comment on this video and we will select a winner by the end of the week. And again I want to thank CIG for sending us these awesome prizes to give away on the channel. As always I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Thank you all for your very generous support of the channel, patrons like you are what make these videos possible. And in this video I would especially like to thank Firebird who recently became a backer of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you Firebird for your generous support, you are awesome and I look forward to seeing you on our servers. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon. 